Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. My guest has moved to a brand new dimension in God's presence, his tangible love. I will be greatly surprised if you do not experience and feel the awesome manifest presence of God's love during this show. Next. Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Welcome, Holy Spirit. No doubt you're here. Moses, Joshua, Caleb, David had the Shekhinah glory of God on them. As a young, traditional Jewish man, that same glory rescued me and gave me something I never thought was possible, my own experiential knowledge of God. And this same glory, it's in the studio right now and will give you your own intimacy with God. Diane Nutt had more than her share of problems. It's really amazing, Diane. Her father deserted her at age three, experienced sexual child abuse, rejection, abandonment, fear, loneliness, depression, addictions, suicide, and life-threatening diseases like cancer and severe COVID, and even more. Each assault on her destiny could have made her bitter. Instead, it made her better. And now she walks in supernatural, not natural, supernatural love, compassion, and glory like few people I know. Hey, I like to tell a joke, but it's true. Diane could read the menu out loud at a Chinese restaurant, and others will feel God's presence. <laughs> Diane, how did you get to be a carrier of so much of God's glory? Well, you know, as you had uh, said, I grew up in, you know, in uh, a strict Southern Baptist home, but I went through a lot of things in my life. And then, of course, my father leaving me at the age of three and moving off and sexually abusing me at 18 months old. And, you know, I just went through so many uh, things that I had to learn to forgive. That was a major key, and it always will be to walk in the glory of God. You have to live a life of forgiveness. No matter how hard it is to forgive, you must forgive always. What about that father? Did you forgive him? I did. Tell and, me about that. Well, you know, it's in the beginning, it was a little difficult, you know, learning of him and that he never supported me financially, uh, no phone calls, you know, birthday, Christmas, none of that. But I knew because of my relationship with God that I needed to forgive him no matter what he did. And because he wasn't saved and I wanted him to be saved, I had to stay in a spirit of love and forgiveness so that God's glory would show up and a miracle would happen and that was his salvation. And someone right now, you're thinking about someone that uh, you have, that has treated you wrong, that sexually abused you, that physically abused you, and God wants you to just forgive them and release it right now and just give it to Him and let God burn up all of those emotions, all of those things that are not of Him, and watch and see what God will do as you stay in a spirit of love and forgiveness. Most people know about the love of a parent for a child, the love of a husband for a wife, but they don't know about what is the difference between those things and the love of God you talk about and walk in. Well, the love of God is, is pure, and, and His love is holy, and His love is everlasting, and His love, it, it draws you. His love compels you to want to do good and to want to walk in everything that He has provided for us 
you know, as believers and, and being a part of the kingdom. And so His love will never let you down. It'll never fail you. And His love is so powerful that when we walk in that love, that power flows out from us to others and people are always aware of it. Tell me about one person's life that was transformed by the love of God. So, uh, so this young woman that uh, she had been in and out of the church, you know, she and her husband, and her husband really didn't come, you know, with him often. And so um, she'd come on a Wednesday night, and I'd been traveling so much for the first three months of this year that I hadn't seen her when she did come. So she was getting ready to leave, and she turned and looked up at the altar. And I looked at her, and I did this, you know, because I wanted her to come up there so I could hug her. So she came up there, and when I began to hug her, God's glory was so strong at that place, and His love was so powerful, a demon started manifesting. Mm. And as soon as that demon realized what was happening, it pulled her, yanked her away from me. She looked at me, and she knew what was happening, and she said, Apostle Nutt, she said, I want to get free. She said, I don't want to stay in this bondage. And so she set her things down, and she came up to the altar. And as I began to, you know, take authority, that devil began to manifest so uh, strongly and saying, she's mine, she'll never be yours. And of course, I was speaking the blood of Jesus over her and that she was, you know, God's child. And it it was a wrestle for a little bit. And I've, I haven't had that kind of of struggle with someone being delivered in like 30 years. And, you know, like that, it was, uh, just so vicious, but it was an ancient demon that God was setting her free from. That's how God revealed that to me. And she could literally feel it moving out of her arms. And even when it got into her hands and she said, and she actually told me it's still in my finger. But when that demon came all the way out, she went back and fell out under the power of God. And the next thing you know when she's laying there, the joy of the Lord just begins to manifest in her. And when she got up, she was a total different person. Now this is the awesome thing that happened. When she came to the service on Sunday morning, her husband came with her and children. And she said, my husband and children, they're saying, what's happened to you? You're different. You're not angry like what you used to be. And so he hadn't been in church. When she did come, he didn't come with her for three months. And so God moved in his life. And so it was just an amazing thing to see because of one person getting free. And then now her husband got free as well. Now you teach on a glory light that I actually haven't had taught on before that's in the Bible. It's called the amber light. And years ago, this light touched you and changed you dramatically. Um, yes. Tell me about someone in your home that saw the amber light. Yes, our uh, spiritual daughter, we were sitting there and we had been talking and sharing and the presence of God just got stronger and stronger. And next thing she's looking at me and she said, I see the glory cloud. She said, but it's an amber light that's all around you. And so that was many, many years ago. And then it appeared in our sanctuary. And a, a young uh, woman came up and told me that when I was preaching, that she saw it was like a sheer curtain. And she said, but it was a wave of, of the glory of the light. And she said it was an amber color. And God set people free. It changed her life eternally. But it was just, she said it was just like waves of glory, but it was the amber that was just moving back and forth. And you say the amber is coming to many believers now. Yes, yes it is. And that amber, see there's something about the amber glory because it represents the fire. You know, the fire of God is the presence of God. But in that place, when we go to the altar, sit and we lay our sacrifices on the altar and we lay our sins on, on the altar and the fire comes and burns up those things, the glory shows up and that amber glory ends up manifesting in our life. Uh, you know, when you shared it, I didn't remember reading about amber light. 
But you mentioned a number of scriptures. One you mentioned, and I actually looked it up, Ezekiel 127. Yes. So Ezekiel 127 says, and as I saw the color of amber as the appearance of fire round about within it from the appearance of his loins even upward and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw it as if it were the appearance of fire and it had a brightness around about it. And so, Sid, people have told me often when I'm ministering that the top part of my body will disappear and all they will see is, you know, the glory cloud of God. And sometimes it's a white cloud, but here more recently, it's been an amber, uh, the amber color of, of the uh, glory. But the fire of God came so strong in my life last year, you know, after going through the COVID and the cancer. And, you know, I really began to repent of things that I didn't even know I needed to repent of. And, you know, it's just those small things. You know, you've been a believer so long. If you had to do it, how much more us? Yes. And, you know, that fire increased. And so the first place that I went and ministered this year in January, they literally said when I came out, there was an amber cloud above my head. And it, it walked with me as I walked up to the platform. And as I was standing there, it was just hovering over me. But as I began to move from the chair over to the podium, the, the amber glory, it spread out and it did it was lengthwise and like this. So it was like my body. It was my whole body was covered in the amber. The secret of Diane's encounter with the amber glory revealed. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Do you know that Messianic Vision was and still is on TV in Ukraine and also had on the ground presence there even before the Ukraine-Russia war began? In Jesus' name, we helped deliver tons of critical food supplies, clean water, and more to desperate people. We ministered in the war-torn city of Odessa where one out of every two people have Jewish ancestry. Many hundreds of people, including entire families, came to faith in Messiah and here's a miracle story from the front lines of the war. Our Ukraine ministry partner, working with the maker of Ukrainian army uniforms, put Bibles in the pockets of 6,000 uniforms. In the Russian invasion, a bullet struck a soldier, but the New Testament put in his pocket stopped it. The soldier lived and now believes in his Messiah. God is so good. This is Vladimir saying goodbye for now, and please consider supporting this vital work we're doing. When you submit a prayer request at sidroth.org slash pray, we print it out and place it inside of this basket. The basket is then taken to our prayer room where every morning each team member selects a stack of prayer requests, reads through them carefully, and prays for each one individually. So if you or someone you know needs prayer, please submit your prayer request to us at sidroth.org slash pray or by calling or texting to 704-943-6503. Have you ever wondered what really happens when you die? Sid Roth has investigated supernatural incidents for 50 years, including many life after death events, out of body experiences, and heavenly visitations. Sid has now curated 10 of the most compelling real life stories of what can happen when we die. And you can have these stories in his New York Times best selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, as a free digital download when you go right now to sidroth.org slash heaven to claim it. These 10 modern day true stories will ignite your faith and you will realize that all the problems you and all of us face, no matter how serious or long standing, are but a moment when compared to the eternal glory awaiting you in heaven. Don't miss this. Start your heavenly journey of discovery today for free by going to SidRoth.org slash heaven. We now return to It's Supernatural. Diane, how can we experience the amber glory? Well, the, the big thing in experiencing the amber glory is there's a scriptures in 
the book of Leviticus in chapter 6, but we have to continually go to the altar because God wants us to render our hearts to Him and not our garments. What, what do you mean by go to the altar? Well, to find that place, it's not like a physical place, like in an edifice, you know, in a building in which we meet, but just to find that time with Him where we bear our hearts before Him and we're real with ourselves and we lay those things on the altar because the fire of God is going to come in such a way that you, you are going to literally want to get rid of everything that is not of God and allow the fire of God to burn those things up. And so we always have to keep the fire burning within us, but the fire upon us. And people can literally feel that fire around you. Yesterday, when we did what we did the show, I looked at the pictures that um, one of the crew had taken, and I could see the fire of God all over me. It was so strong, and the fire of God on you. And I'm like, okay, these are... The fire of God was, it changed I'll, I'll the color. You, it was getting so strong on me, I was looking like you. <laughs> we did a social media yesterday. <laughs> What's happening Sorry, I'm just, inside of you? What's I'm just happening? being overtaken by the glory of the Lord. I would just ask people, just lift your hands up to the Lord right now. And I want you to just receive because His glory is tangible because God is a tangible God. And He wants you to not just be aware of maybe some of you see that amber glory right now. Maybe some of you see even the white glory cloud. But the key here is, is Him in His fullness of who He is, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he wants you just to receive an impartation right now. So I just release the glory into your homes right now. Wherever you are listening right now, I mean, I can feel electricity in my hands right now. It's very, very powerful, Sid. And miracles are happening right now. God's supernaturally healing someone's heart right now where you had a lot of trauma, and, and tragedy, and you've really, you've felt suicidal. You felt like giving up on life. Listen, abundant life is being made available to you right now. I can literally see the glory moving right now. Even in this studio that we're in right now, the glory cloud is present right now, but miracles are being made available to you right now. And, and I told you, I'm a feeler. And it is, as she's talking, it's almost like Ezekiel's temple where the yes. water was at the ankle and then the knee and then the waist and then so high, all you could do is swim. You're yes. almost swimming right I now. I am. <laughs> There's some of you even right now that you can feel, literally feel the fire of God that is on you right now. Just surrender to that. And because God is supernaturally burning those things up and you are forgiven I'm just telling you right now, the forgiveness of God is right there, and you just need to forgive yourself. Just go ahead and forgive yourself right now and let His love come. Just let it come. Just open up your heart and let His love come. And you know, right now, I see the glory of God. It's, it's getting thicker in here. I can see it, and so I know that someone, somewhere, if not many of you, are tangibly seeing the glory of God right now. You're feeling the glory of God right now. Sid, God is just moving so strongly right now. Oh, I know. That's Hallelujah. Why, that's why I'm just soaking <laughs> it up. Uh, I, I hate to end. Do you have anything more that you want to say? Well, I'm just being quickened to what the Holy Spirit shared with me, that you are crossing over a threshold into another room. The door is just opening up and the miracles are going to keep increasing. The recreative miracles are going to become the norm. Excuse me, that is another sign of the greater glory. You see, we have had miracles 
in the anointing, but in the glory, these are miracles that will be outside the body, such as someone without a leg, the leg yes. that's been amputated, the leg growing out. Yes. There'll be no question. That's what TV was designed for, not the other stuff. That's right. <laughs> that's right. We've run out of time, but we will continue with a special online event right now. Diane and other guests will continue to increase in glory exponentially. And in this high degree of glory, all things are possible. Yes. Instantly, as soon as this show ends, go to SidRoth.org slash rise. But I have a question for you. I've heard this come out of Diane over and over again. When that glory comes, it'll burn you up, not you. Anything that isn't of God is going to burn up. So my question to you is, are you ready or should you be living a holy, repentant life now? Trust me. When that glory comes, you don't want to have hidden sin. It's not hidden from the presence of God. Repeat this prayer after me out loud. Dear God, Dear God please forgive me, please forgive me for, all for all the things I've done wrong, all the gossip, all the hurts I've brought people, all the hurts I've all the resentment I've had for people. All the resentment I've had around people. And Lord, anything else I can't remember. Put that under the blood. I thank you, your word says. I thank you that your word says. When you see the blood, you will remember our sins no more. And we're clean. And I'm ready for your amber glory now. I say, Jesus is my Savior from all of my sins. And I make you my Lord in every area of my life. Amen. Amen. Diane, would you pray for us now? Sure, sure, absolutely. So, Father, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would open up the eyes of the understanding of each of those who are watching today. Father God, that you would enlighten their hearts, Lord God, so that they would know the hope of their calling, which is in Christ. Father, I pray that every person would not just have an experience with you, but they would have an encounter with you, an encounter with your glory that would change their lives forever that would cause them to have a hunger in such a uh, just a, the taste buds for your glory to live in that realm of your glory and to walk in it father let your glory just be manifested even now to those who are watching all over those who are here in the studio father thank you right now for your glory just coming and descending in this place in even a greater way. And Father, I just thank you that the amber glory, Father, will begin to show up and manifest as your precious sons and daughters, as they go to the altar, as they lay things on the altar, and as they allow the fire of the Holy Ghost to come and to burn those things up. Father, thank you for the supernatural manifesting and for your glory just residing on them and within them in the name of Yeshua. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, do you feel that peace? I sure feel that peace in Yeshua's wow. name, amen. We Jews have two choices, follow God or follow tradition. The rabbis tell us, fast and pray on Yom Kippur and our sins will be forgiven. They don't tell us the main event, only the blood of Messiah pardons sin. Fasting and praying without the main event doesn't work. 
Messiah Jesus suffered the penalty we deserve. 2,000 years ago, he was our final Yom Kippur blood sacrifice. Your penalty paid in full. May your name really be inscribed eternally in the Book of Life. Think for yourself. I'm Sid Roth, a Jewish follower of the Messiah. Download my free ebook detailing my supernatural experience with Jesus, an irrefutable proof that Jesus is the very Messiah we Jewish people have been waiting for for centuries. I was afraid of the supernatural until I started watching your TV program and since doing your mentoring study guide and DVD. Now the fear has gone and I do believe I have received an impartation from God. SidRoth.org forward slash praise. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide. 